Welcome to Tesserai's Nerf Room. Today we're going to be revisiting the Elite 2.0 Phoenix. Why did it take me so long to get to this? Well, let's find out. So if you're unfamiliar with the Phoenix, this was basically the new Strife with a whole lot of these, lots of these. But honestly, I dig the idea. Bring the Strife back and make it better. Problem is, Hasbro didn't do either of those things. They brought the Modulus back, and they made everything about it worse. Except for the price tag. You got this for half the price of a Modulus, which was pretty cool. So what exactly is it that they failed? The performance, the function, the ergo, the usability, the act of being able to have smooth operation on the blaster, the general concept and execution of the blaster, the design is bad, the idea is bad, and they wanted to replace the Strife with this. Hasbro, why? If the year was late 2020 or further and you walked into a Walmart to get a Strife, you would be greeted by an Elite 2.0 Phoenix instead. This was the new Strife. This was marketed as a new Strife. So how does it hold up? You already know where this is going. I told you where this is going, but let's not get into everything yet. Let's start with the design. If you can imagine the Stripe having a butt chin, that's basically what this thing is. It copies most of, if not all of the details the Stripe had, but makes them slightly worse in some regard, like having the grill down here and the exposed barrel right here. Even though it isn't an exposed barrel, it just has a similar detail and it now has a tactical rail for some reason. And the front end is super thick for some reason. I don't know why the front end is so thick. It doesn't make much sense, but it is for some bizarre reason. Unfortunately, having the front end being so thick kills one of the redeeming features the Strife had, its holster ability. You'd have to get a huge holster to fit the Strife, but you could holster the Strife like a pistol. Instead of holstering something like the Strongarm, which only held six shots, the Strife could be holstered being a flywheel semi-automatic blaster. That's magazine fed. That was a pretty big deal, and that was one of the Strife's biggest selling points right out of the gate before people even started modding it. This one is just too big to fit in any holster, no matter how big your holster is. But if we just ignore the design and go on to the ergonomics, that isn't done well either. The grip itself is all right, but the thing is, the actual design of how the grip is implemented is so stupid. Another reason for this big front part is so that you have a foregrip, because that's the battery door. The batteries are in the front, which means the blaster is obnoxiously front heavy. This was not a problem the Strife had because the batteries were put up here above the grip. But on this blaster, all of the weight is at the front. The flywheels, motors, flywheel cage, barrel, and batteries are in this big chunk of plastic right here. The only thing that's at the back is the trigger mechanism and the pusher. That is a lot of weight in the front and you feel it every second that you're holding this. It is a miserable experience to try and use this thing as a pistol. Now, while you can remedy this issue by giving it a stock and then using it as a primary, why do I have to do that? I didn't have to do that with the Strife. I should have to do it here, and I don't like doing it here. It sucks using this as a primary. I would rather use something more designed to be a primary if I'm gonna use it as a primary. The way that this blaster is set up is just so stupid, but yeah, let's get onto the trigger. So first of all, if you're feeling insecure about your magazines, don't worry, this thing's got you covered. You can push that in and it's not gonna come out. Even if you pull it almost all the way out, it's not gonna come out. You wanna mag drop this? Good luck! Well, yeah, let's just ignore that for right now and pretend that that's actually good. The mag release sucks. It's the same thing as the turbines, but it is bigger and it actually has fillets on it, so it's not as painful as the turbines. That doesn't make it good, it makes it less painful. As for the rev trigger, yeah, it's smushy. As for the main trigger, just like the turbine, it's the only good trigger. It has a very nice pop to it when you pull it. And you can actually feel it and hear it when I pull the trigger. So yeah, that trigger's done fine. Also, remember the bit about the jam door on the turbine? It happens here too! And this one holds on a little bit better, but it happens in the exact same way! Now it hasn't happened as much as the turbine because when it is closed, it's actually held on pretty well, but the fact that it can happen at all is just... Astro! Stupid! Yeah, but you already know how it goes. Let's just go to the functionality. Magazine. It sucks. You rev it. It sucks. You pull the trigger to fire and it's semi-automatic. There's no exciting internals in here. It takes four double A's. You put them in the front because that's the best place to put them according to supervisor. And there's a lot of attachment points all over this, none of which you will ever want to use. 
Oh, you want to run down, the barrel's too loose, the stock is too tight, and the rails are made like crap. This new attachment mechanism they came up with, and this was the first blaster I had that had this, Look at how dumb that is. You are literally flexing the plastic just to get the attachment to fit on, and it is still really thick plastic right there, so it just doesn't hold on very well. It's too hard to put things on, and it's too hard to take things off, and they don't feel stable when you do get them on because they're just not manufactured very well. Every attachment point on this blaster is useless. Every single one. I'm gonna fire this demo. Oh, did you like the way those motors sound? Then you don't know why it's so bad. There are two different pitches if you listen to the motors of this blaster, which kind of sort of means that one of the motors is running at two thirds capacity while the other one is running at full capacity. Quality control just doesn't exist here. Not even with the motors they put in their blaster could they give you consistent motors. They didn't even know if they were going to work out of the box. And I know this for a fact because I know two people, two other people that have the Phoenix and both of their Phoenixes sound completely different than mine. Their Phoenixes don't even sound like each other. All three of these blasters have different sounding motors because there's just no quality control with these. I don't know if that's changed now, now that the blasters have kind of been updated to remove the clips, but I'm assuming they're all gonna be just as dumb. So if you wanna take anything away from this video, it's that this blaster is atrocious. Now, what do you wanna do? Do not get a Phoenix, please don't get one. There are two other blasters I can think of right now that you should get your hands on before you even think about touching the Phoenix. First, if you plan on modifying, get a Strife. This one has been lightly modified to remove the locks, but for all intents and purposes, it's a stock Strife, and it smashes the Phoenix. This thing is years old, and it still obliterates the Phoenix. Even this stupid modulus one obliterates the Phoenix. And if you're a stock class nerfer, pick up a Storm Charge, because out of all three of these blasters, I think this one is the best if you are willing to sand down this stupid magwell. Again, check out my review if you want more details on that. But this has the best of everything. This blaster is fine, the, the Strife is fine, the Phoenix is just atrocious. Please do not buy one. If you are insane enough to get one, I will link it in the description below. But that's pretty much it. Bye.